One of the most interesting aspects of all this incredible technological change we see is that the leader's role has gone from being hierarchical, where they had all the information and their job was, in a sense, to distribute that, to knowledge and information being shared freely across the organization. So therefore, the leader's role becomes much more helping people understand what the goals of the organization are and to do that in an inspiring way, but also to coach and support them to make the right and good decisions. The relevancy of technology has changed the business of business education so much. 17 years ago, the most technology we had the classroom was a computer and faculty behind the computer with a PowerPoint presentation. These days, it goes much, much beyond that. And students and the business community expect us to be more technologically savvy. Technology has changed the way we do business, the way we teach, and the way we act in the academy. I think uh, business schools have a really important role to play in influencing industry and in, in, in promoting the importance of well-being in the workplace. I think in several ways business schools can help here, first of all by our research and making sure that our research gets out there into industry and in preferably is done in partnership with industry, so industry are helping us set the problems that they want to find the solutions for. But I think an even more important way is actually just by um, through our students. So in working with our students to promote the importance of well-being in their own uh, lives, they're then taking that into industry and industry can see the importance in their workforce that well-being means particularly as we'll all be working longer lives. On one side, you have to think strategically and to think long term and you have to plan. But on the other side, um, the, the, the speed of change and the path of change is so quick that you have to be able to strategize on one side, but to decide very quickly on a few opportunities on the other. So you have simultaneously to be very long-term committed, but uh, in the same time to be able to grasp opportunity and to size the spirit of the moment, because some, sometimes, for example, uh, let me take an example, the, the length of a student generation, a student social generation, which means a class of age which behaves more or less in the same way. Today, it is considered to be four to five years in the Western world, and it's considered to be two or three years in China. So our students just a few years after are not the same students we are addressing to. Uh, and, uh, and for these reasons, the, the speed we can incorporate non-predicted uh, changes has to be quick, while we have to think strategically about what we want to do in the next five or ten years. So we're at an interesting moment in time where non-business schools are able to get into the education game much easier than before. And we do have some advantages. At Eurasia Group, we have a host of practitioners that are talking to corporations on a daily basis about what matters to them in our area of expertise, which is geopolitics. And we're able to update our curriculums and our learnings much faster uh, than traditional approaches. This may sound like a disruptive threat to the way that, that schools uh, view their relationship with corporations or with, uh, with their students, but actually it's an opportunity because we can be idea generators, we can be thought partners, we can engage uh, with schools to better serve their students, and we can find novel ways to blend uh, the research and academic understanding that the university setting has and the convening power the university setting has with our real-time practitioner learnings. Now, of course, at business school, historically, we teach how business executive or MBA students to build sustainable advantage. In other words, to build monopolies. I think the societal expectation is changing, particularly what's great for one company could be bad for the whole economy and the labor market as well. This is why we begin to see a lot of rhetoric from breaking up big tech to increase regulation to protect consumer in data privacy, to open AI so that smart machine would no longer be proprietary algorithm operating in a black box, but rather to become explainable, almost nutritional label, so the end consumer would understand this is safe, 
we know where the data set is coming from. And uh, if we were to change the algorithm, it would be fair at a societal basis. So I think monopoly or monopolistic behavior has been historically been pretty much embraced, unfortunately, by business school. That's gonna change rapidly. Otherwise, business school in general would be rendered irrelevant.